Welcome everybody to War Game Wednesday. I want to say I would love to have a special welcome for today's guest. Now, this is David Newman, actually a personal friend of mine. I say that. He doesn't tell people that. Okay, but that's that's for his own edification and keeping things going. But um, he has developed, as you can see behind him in his extensive library, there happens to be a book facing us, which is the Do It Marketing, and he also has Do It Speaking, the 77 Instant Action Ideas to Market, Monetize, and Maximize Your Expertise. So in all of us here, when we look at what we do for a living, our job is to make sure people understand we're the expert. So then what did I do is I said, let me go grab the expert of making you the expert and giving the impression of that because David has a wealth of information. He is out there. He is live, what, almost every day? Uh, not as much as you are. I'm, I'm a slacker. Yeah. Now, I think we're all failing compared to Ken Walls, but I still want to say that we're, we're doing pretty decent. But when you look at this, guys, I want you to understand, David Newman is coming. He's, giving, he's going to give us the gift. I told him if he's got something that will help you, I want him talking about it. David's going to tell us now if we're going to play interactively with one another or are we going to sit back and hold questions till the end? What would you like them to do, David? Uh, let's hold questions till the end because I want to just drop as many value bombs as I possibly can on you. We'll go for 30, 35 minutes. Then we can open it up for a little convo. Fantastic. Woo, look at that. I can hear myself in the background now. All right. We're getting there. Norbert, I'm going to recognize some people out on Facebook. Of course, there's Edna, Larry. We got Norbert, who's in there. Johnny Richardson. Hello, brother. Johnny's still, if you look at Johnny's picture behind him, he's still beating everyone in his office three to nothing. Yeah. Okay. It's there you all go. There. Yes. So, Brian, welcome. Yesenia is hiding in there. Stacy Short is at work and is here. Casey is at work and here. Dylan is at work and here. So, and we know Gia Camino's in his truck. So that's going to say, there's a lot of people, David, that have taken out of their day to say that David Newman is going to change the way I do business. And David Newman is going to invest in me and make it so that I can sell more. And we know that's exactly what we're all here for. So I am going to turn this call over to David Newman. And as we said, everybody hold the questions till we get to the end. So get your pens ready, have paper in front of you, right? And start going. Now, David, can we talk about that pen? This pen? Sure. Yes. So the I learned pen. from David the money pen. that when you hold a pen up on a Zoom, right? When you hold that up, exactly. Like right now, Casey's more important than all of us because she had two. But when you show your hands, and you hold a pen that actually show, gives you more credibility on a Zoom call. Am I right? It makes you look smarter because obviously what well, Joe's taking notes, Natalie's taking notes, Johnny's taking notes. He must be a professional. So don't just hold the pen, hold the pen and show the pen go. I, our first live stream that we did was absolutely hilarious watching David, Ken Walls and myself and the whole time we all kept our hands on the screen and held pens and did back and forth. And everybody was like, guys, it's like a puppet show going on. Will you quit? And we were like, no, no, because we're all trying to compete on who's the smartest person out there. But these are simple things, right, that you can actually throw out there. And that's something you can walk away. Everybody's writing down, um, hold my pen in the screen because it makes me look yeah. smarter. Like. Mike Phillips, you wouldn't know that he was smart except for the glasses, but there's his hands, which now his hands came up. We are learning. We're like, wow, Well, he's two smart. things actually, right, Joe? So it's two things. Number one, when you show your hands in a lot, this is psychologically proven. It's not just us ranting like crazy people. When you show your hands, it means that you're more trustworthy. So you don't have to do it all the time, but once in a while, Showing the hands, right, means I'm not carrying a weapon. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm, I'm here. I'm talking to you. And then also when you're relating to people through the camera like this, your hand is, again, being seen in the frame so it makes you more trustworthy. So this is trustworthy. This is smart. There you go. Class is over. Who's got questions? That's great. And Fareed over in Facebook, did you write that down? Because you take copious notes, right? She's been using that word for like, 10 years, copious, copious, 
right? She doesn't take a lot of, now Natalie's laughing because Natalie was in the same room with me when we all heard everybody go, you must take copious notes, okay? But Jaime, just like you and I, when we get pulled over, right? Keep your hands up so that the officer can see your hands. It's very trustworthy and less chance of us getting dragged out of the car. So Josiah, welcome out there. All right, I'm gonna stop welcoming all you people because there's a lot of you out there on Facebook and I'm going to say, David Newman, please take it away. All right, let's do a little, little presentation time here. And there we are. Can everyone see the PowerPoint expert profit formula and not the War Games Group logo because I could not find a War Games Group logo. I'm sure there is one. I'm yes. sure it looks fantastic. Yes, it's this just is me not wearing it. camouflage, so of course you wouldn't see yeah. it. Exactly, exactly. So there we are. So we're talking about the expert profit formula, how to grow your business in turbulent times. The premise of this is exactly what Joe said. Every one of us, every sales professional, no matter what you sell, uh, you are first selling expertise, advice, insights, and recommendations to your prospects uh, hopefully that is going to be in their best interest, you as their trusted advisor salesperson, not a vendor, not a peddler, not even being considered a salesperson, but someone who is a trusted advisor and a, a consultant essentially, who is going to sell them some sort of solution, outcome, etc. That's what I mean by the word expert, just in case people have any specific questions about that. I do have a ton of resources. We're going to go kind of fast, hard, boom, boom, boom. But I want to give you all these resources right here. I use a platform called Kiwi Live. When you bring up Kiwi Live, open up a fresh tab, do this on your phone, do it on your tablet, whatever you want to do. KiwiLive.com, put in my keyword, which is do it, because my company name is do it marketing, but the keyword is just D-O-I-T. You will get this PowerPoint. You'll get all my social media connections if you'd like to connect. You're getting two free PDFs in there, plus a 51-minute training that we recorded called the Consulting Revenue Roadmap, which may or may not be of interest to you. You will get a free complete copy of the Do It Marketing book in PDF format and some more cool stuff that I threw in there. I even forgot what I put in here for Joe's group, but it's cool stuff. KiwiLive.com, keyword is do it. Go in there, get all the goodies. We'll do more about that at the end, but that should just help you. Uh, okay, so we're living in crazy upside down times right now, kind of like the Matrix. And of course, the, my favorite line from the Matrix is red pill versus blue pill, right? Straight from the movie, as you might remember, you take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever it is you want to believe. Oh, it's a terrible time in the economy. Nobody wants to buy my crap. It's COVID-19. So, so much crisis, so much turbulence. You know, I'm not worthy. No one's paying attention to me. I'm just trying to sell my stuff. No one's taking meetings, blah, 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 blah. All that negative, crazy nonsense, which by the way, is completely not true. We'll talk about why that is in a moment. Or my choice, my recommendation is that you take the red pill and again, straight from the movie, you stay in Wonderland and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. So I'm going to say, let's take the red pill. Let's take the red pill starting right now. So to recalibrate what we're doing and how we're doing it as far as marketing, sales, client and customer acquisition, upselling, cross-selling, there's a three-part formula. You know, everyone said at some point in your life, hey, follow your passion, do what you love and the money will follow. That is complete horse crap and it doesn't work because it's only one third of the equation. When you're redefining and redeciding who you are in today's landscape, it's three intersecting circles. Intersecting circle number one is yes, what is your professional expertise? What are you passionate about? What are you excited about? Where are your gifts and talents? But the other two circles are even more important. Number two is who am I passionate about? That blue circle. So who are your peeps? Who's your tribe? Who's your fans, your followers, your ideal customers? the people that you really resonate with, that you would have as your friends. And then the third circle is, okay, looking over at circle number two, which is the blue one, what are those people passionate to learn, do, have, or become? Let me repeat that. What are those people passionate to learn, do, have, or become? What do they want? 
What do they want personally? What do they want professionally? What do they want financially? What do they want for their family, their kids, their future? Uh, how, how do they want to see themselves in their peer group? How do they want to see themselves to their colleagues? How do they want to see themselves as far as their customers, right? So we always say, hey, think about your customer. What Joe teaches, what I, I know to be true, think about your customer's customer. If you're in a B2B world, if you're in a B2C world, think about your customer's family. Think about your customer's friends. What's the image that when they buy from you, how are they better off personally, professionally, financially, as far as... Uh, their identity. That is really, really important. And then figure out the flip side of the coin is let's use the process of elimination. Who do you not want as your customer? What kind of customer or client drives you crazy, makes you nuts, makes you throw the phone out the window and say, why did I ever do business with this clown? And then stop doing business with those people. In fact, stop marketing and messaging in a way that attracts those people, which we'll also talk about here in a moment how to turn off the wrong kind of messaging and marketing, how to turn on the right kind of messaging and marketing so that you start to unleash a uh, steady flow of ideal prospects and customers and cash in your sales career. So think about it this way. If you're in a revamping mode and we've all been sort of revamping, retooling, recalculating in some way for the past eight months, I would challenge you that if you're only saying, hey, you know what, we're living in this new wor virtual world, things are remote, things are not, you know, we're not doing as much in person anymore, you are at risk. If that's the only thing you're doing is same crap now on Zoom. We do not want same crap now on Zoom. I'm gonna encourage you to think about three much more profound things, which is what's the business model your personal business model, not necessarily your company, because if you don't own your company, you can't change your business model, but your personal, what is your personal business model as a sales professional? What is your personal sales strategy as a sales professional? Sometimes we need to change that. The second one is, are you selling to the right people? The right industry, the right kind of buyer, the right kind of consumer uh, at the right kind of level? And then the third one is, do you need to shift and change your messaging given the new environment that we're in? Uh, talk about new value points, talk about new higher levels of relevance and increase the urgency with which they buy what you are selling. And if you do two, three, and four, you are in reinvention mode. I don't want you revamping because revamping is short-term and short-sighted, and it's not gonna leap you ahead. What I, I would love, my vision, my wish for every sales professional is that we come out of this disruption, this transformation, call it what you will, stronger, better, smarter, and richer than when we came in in March of 2020. And if you're in reinvention mode, that is exactly what you will do. If you're just tweaking or going, oh, I'm just gonna hide under my desk until we have a vaccine. I'm gonna hide under my desk until something happens or blows over. Forget about it. You're in survival mode. You're not in winning mode. And I want everyone here in winning mode. Here is why this model market and message shift is important. And see if you can relate to some of this. I think some folks really already have some experience with this. The more that your products and services are in demand, the easier it is to sell in spite of yourself because now you're unlocking a whole bunch of new people that want to buy. It is much easier to talk to people who want to buy than it is to try and push and strive and sell and convince and persuade. We're not even in the convincing and the persuading business, my friends. We're in the filtering and sorting business. And the moment that we shift that mental model from let me convince you, let me persuade you to see, you know what? I wanna make sure that you're a great fit. I wanna make sure that we're talking about the right thing, the right product, the right solution, the right program. You're in filtering and sorting mode and you're qualifying them as much, if not more, than they're qualifying you. Second point, second piece of good news, the better you are at client selection and prospect selection, the worse you can be at everything else, including selling. Now, you're not gonna be terrible at selling because you're here with Joe, but the idea is 
the better you are at zeroing in on the exact right set of prospects, customers, and clients, everything in your life gets easier. And then beyond that, it's just the math problem. So whatever it is you're selling at whatever price point, as far as your commission, as far as your income, do you want to increase 10K a month? Do you want to increase 20K a month? Do you want to increase 30K or more per month? It's just a math problem, right? Super simple. Price times quantity equals total. I sell this much of this product at this profit margin or this commission. I win. So these three things, if you get what I just talked about right, you're going to start to unleash these three beneficial side effects that the more your services and products are in demand, the easier it's gonna to be to sell in spite of yourself, the better you are at client selection, the worse you can be at everything else. And then beyond that, it's just a math problem, price times quantity equals total. So here's a truth bomb. Uh, when people say, oh, you know, uh, my folks can't afford it, I'm getting a lot of price, uh, price objections, money objections, do not change your pricing. Do not change your fees. Do not cave. Do not bargain. Don't change your fees, my friends. Change your clients. Whenever I hear one of my clients say, oh, I can't find any leads that have money. I can't find any leads that can afford what we do. I say, okay, well, you're clearly looking in the wrong place. You're fishing with the wrong bait in the wrong ponds. You're catching the wrong kind of fish. So here's the deal, my friends. You will never turn a Walmart shopper into a Nordstrom's customer. Think about it what, in light of what I just said, which is we're not in the convincing and the persuading business. When you walk into Nordstrom's, Nordstrom's is filled with Nordstrom's shoppers, right? That's where to find them. That's where they go. That's who you want to attract. So do not, if you're having any kind of price resistance, price objection, pricing problems, it's not about your business. It's not about your product. It's not about your service. It's not about your fees or your pricing. It's about who you're talking to. So here's the sound bite. Here's the value bomb. Don't change your fees. Change your clients. Get better clients. A couple of mistakes along the way that I made early on. I wasn't sure what business I was in. I, I was a grocery bag, uh, a grocery bag entrepreneur. Uh, it wasn't coordinated. It was I was a jack of all trades, master of none. I was doing any kind of project, any kind of fee, you know, anytime, anywhere. Uh, anything. I was hugely scattered and misdirected with all kinds of things that we'll talk about here later. But you want to be really crystal clear on what business you are in and what problem you are solving. Mistake number two is, like I said a moment ago, I was ready to take on all comers. I didn't care who you were, where you came from. Uh, if you were a warm body with a check, if you were a warm body with a credit card, I would talk to you. Remember what we said a moment ago, client selection, customer selection is so vitally important. I should have been much better early on at disqualifying. I, I shouldn't worry about qualifying. And maybe you're in a spot in your career, you shouldn't worry about qualifying, but you should be really concerned about disqualifying the wrong kind of client, the goofballs, the tire kickers, the price shoppers, the nutcases. We do not want to do business with those people because they are a toxic drain on your sales and on your commissions. And then the third mistake that I made early on is giving in to all kinds of head trash, fear, uncertainty, doubt, and a whole bunch of self-limiting beliefs. That little devil on your shoulder that's saying, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, who wants to buy your crap in the middle of this crazy meltdown? So your three success factors to really take your business and your selling to the next level is clarity on exactly who you are, what you offer, why it's different, cooler, better, faster, smarter. So all of your distinctions in the marketplace. Number two, focus. Focus on who you serve and exactly what problems you solve. And then number three is become a decision ninja. Decisions is what separates mediocre salespeople from amazingly successful salespeople, right? They think fast, they act fast, they decide fast as far as your marketing tools, where to find prospects, how to set and get profitable pricing fees, et cetera. Uh, making decisions, the more decisions that you make in your sales career, the faster and more rapidly you will accelerate your results. Without those three things, and see if you can think back to some times in your career where you kind of hit a roadblock or hit a wall, 
without the clarity, the focus, and the decisions, your strategy is always changing. It's the flavor of the month club. Oh, you know, now I'm going to try social media. Oh, let me try Facebook Live, see how that goes. You know what? I, we should be doing more direct mail. Oh, you know what it is? It's about the phone calls. No, your strategy should not constantly be changing. Your strategy should stay the same and constantly be improving. Your tactics without clarity, focus, and decisions, the tactics are scattered and exhausting because you're reading every email, you're signing up for every new platform, you're following the guru of the month club, and you're signing up for this coach and this boot camp and this mentorship. It, the tactics are scattered and exhausting because the tail is wagging the dog. It's a tactic in search of a strategy and you don't wanna do that. And then the third sign that you don't have enough clarity, focus, and decisions is that your results are inconsistent and not where you want them to be. They're subpar. So right now we're living in an attention economy to get any kind of buyer, any kind of consumer, any kind of traction. We first have to earn their attention before we get the chance to earn their money. The way that I do that, the way that Joe does that, the way I'm, I'm sure some of you do this, is what I call happy meal marketing. Where are you adding value to your prospects before they buy? Are you adding value? Are they better off just having consumed your marketing messages and your sales messages? Have they learned something? Have they gotten some insight? Have they gotten smarter? Have they gotten an edge in whatever it is that you're selling and that we're marketing? Have they learned something about your professional expertise or the products or services or programs that you're selling, not when they buy, but just because they've experienced your marketing, just because they read your Facebook post, just because they came onto a live stream, just because they clicked over to your YouTube channel, just because they read your latest email newsletter or blog, are they better off because they've consumed your marketing so that you become known as the sales professional who delivers pre-sale value. A lot of people say, hey, you buy from me, it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be great. I want people to experience not the post-sale value that you deliver with your products and your services, I want you to deliver pre-sale value. So if you look at what Joe's doing, you look at what other people that you admire are doing, they are a source of pre-sale value so that more people know what's on offer, why it's awesome, and they say, oh my gosh, this stuff is free. I can't wait until I sign up for Joe's program. I can't wait till I become a customer. So that's what you want to do there. Now, we talked about this before we turned the cameras on here. Um, I think that every sales professional, your job, and this is why Joe is so great at it, this is why I'm so great at it, um, we are a professional irritant. Our sworn duty as sales professionals is to be a professional irritant, meaning that we are gonna cause some friction. We are gonna cause some divisiveness. We're gonna cause some conversation to happen. We are not going to blend in. We are not going to be vanilla. We're not going to be what I call a same old lame old salesperson who sounds like, looks like, and acts like every other salesperson. We are going to be that little grid of sand that's in the oyster that causes the pearl to be formed. So as a professional irritant, I would ask you with all due love and respect, who are you pissing off? Who are you irritating in your target market? Because here's the truth bomb, my friends. If you don't risk turning some people off, you will never turn anybody on. I'm gonna repeat that because it's so profound. You can take this with you for the rest of your professional career. If you don't risk turning some people off, you will never turn anybody on. And especially now in this crazy upside down COVID crazy world, the attention economy is real. Nobody pays attention to a nice guy. Nobody pays attention to a boring salesperson. You need to take a stand, not only for what you sell, you need to take a stand for your customer. You need to take a stand for your prospect. What are they going through and how can you be the ninja warrior who's got that prospect's best interest at heart, no matter what the industry says, no matter what the traditional um, thinking or the uh, conventional wisdom is, you need to stand apart. 
So if you want to stand out, take a stand. Be bold, be opinionated, be contrarian. Do not be afraid to share your biases, your slant, your personal and or client and customer experiences. Like I just said, no one needs more vanilla information. Prospects are hungry for guidance. Prospects want specific insights, guidance, and help that they cannot get anywhere else. You watch what Joe does. He is masterful at this. Uh, you can buy all kinds of sales books. You can buy all kinds of books about, you know, every possible imaginable marketing, sales, prospecting, upselling, cross-selling. You will never get what Joe gives you in his programs, on his website, in his Facebook Lives, on his YouTube channel. Uh, you, he's one of a kind. He's one of a kind because he does everything on this slide, and I would heartily encourage you to do the same. Now, let's talk about some nitty-gritty sales language and how to build it and how to talk about what you do and what your products and services can do for a customer. I would focus on the risks right now in the current environment. I would focus on the risks of not addressing and not solving their most critical issues. I would reposition every product, every service that you sell to address those exact issues and outcomes. The shortcut, the secret ninja skill you're about to get is to start using the phrase, so that. So that language is outcome language. It's not about the car they're gonna buy. It's not about the insurance policy. It's not about the real estate. It's about the outcome. It's where will they be once they invest? Where will they be once they buy? What do, so my, my friend Dove Gordon says, when you're talking to prospects, the only two things you should ever be talking about is things that they have and do not want and things that they want and do not have. Things that they have and do not want are problems. Things that they want and do not have are outcomes or results or some ultimate destination. So that's how I would reposition everything that you do. And then finally, create urgency around these hair on fire priorities by using language like before it's too late or in the next 30 days. Or my favorite phrase that I use almost every email, every webcast, every everything is right now. Use that right now framing uh, before it's too late, in the next 30 days, in the next week, in the next seven days, in whatever time frame. And then right now is immediacy in two words, right now. What do you need right now? Um, what do you want right now? Here's some examples of these principles in practice. Urgent hair on fire issue. Ignoring problem X right now when everyone is remote can decrease situation Y even more, right? So it's an instant urgency when they see that statement. You fill in X, you fill in Y with whatever your particular situation is. Let's look at the so that language. What do people want to do right now where they're in crisis crazy mode? They want to protect, extend, preserve, safeguard. They want to reduce risk. They want to reduce cost. They want to avoid problems X, Y, and Z. Change your marketing language to start using phrases like so that you protect your cash flow, so that you extend your runway with this payment plan, so that you preserve cash and you know get a very low interest loan so that you safeguard your family's future so that you reduce risk when times are so uncertain so that you can save money right now while you're dealing with situation x and then finally when people are distracted and we always have to sell to people who are lazy busy befuddled and distracted if your sole focus is fill in the blank of what their sole focus is Right. If your number one priority is when X is all you care about, if Y is making you crazy, by the way, these are all objections. They say, sorry, Joe, can't talk to you. Our sole focus right now is whatever the sole focus is. Uh, you know, sorry, Joe, can't talk to you right now. We are so our number one priority. We are so hell bent on getting this thing done. If your sole focus is objection buster, if your prior number one priority is objection buster. So someone might say to me, right, I'm helping people with marketing and sales and so forth, uh, David, I am just so focused on protecting my current income. My marketing should say, if your sole focus is protecting your current income, you need this program, you need this course, you need this, whatever it is I'm selling. 
So objection busting in advance allows you to tap into their existing psychology and their objections melt away because you've put part of the objection is the reason they need to buy from you. So final truth bomb, stop nickel and diming your fees and your pricing, cutting prices because everyone else is doing it. What is this, third grade? And I gave you some third graders here to look at. Uh, live by the mantra, solve bigger problems, get bigger checks. That is the business that we are all in right now. Kill some self-limitations, including self-limiting beliefs and actions and goals and pricing. Stop acting small, treading water, getting too comfortable doing okay. The breakthrough looks like this. Imagine if it were easy. This takes intense focus and intelligent, massive action. Stop being so damn comfortable with what you have going on right now. Think big, act bigger, and fully engage with what's possible, understanding that you can have your sales career, you can have your business exactly the way you want it. You don't need to compromise. You don't need to settle. Everyone else is struggling. Uh, our friend Jeffrey Gittimer says, do not let the economy affect your economy. And I love that Gittimer quote. Do not let the economy affect your economy because you are in charge of your economy. So with everything we talked about, we're about to roll into our Q&A here. Ask yourself, of all the things we talked about today, is this missing in your sales career? If it's missing, I would love you to add it. Is it messy? Is it, eh, it's there, but it's not consistent. I'm kind of here and there. I'm all over the map with it. If it's messy, fix it. And if it's not working the way you want, and it's not, it's not uh, connected to the right kind of prospects with the right kind of market, the right kind of message, the right kind of modality, if it's misaligned, I would pivot it. So it's just as simple as change, just as simple and just as hard as changing your day-to-day -day behavior. That starts with your mindset. It goes into your prospecting. It goes into your messaging. It goes into your pricing. It goes into absolutely everything. So that's where to get the goodies. KiwiLive.com. Magic code word is do it, D-O-I-T. You get this PowerPoint. You get all my social media connections. You can email me. I'm happy to follow up with you. You get a couple of PDFs in our 51-minute um, training, and you get the full free copy of the full text, the PDF copy of my book, Do It Marketing. And like I said, I think I threw some other cool stuff in there. Can't tell you right now what the hell it is, but it's cool. It's there, and it's free. So pop in there right now, grab that, and then let's go to our Q&A. 33 minutes. That didn't suck. That was pretty good. I'm, I'm going to tell you that was fantastic. It was like drinking from a fire hose. I was like, dang. And it's like, I'm over here just scribbling away. So one of the things I want to ask when you went through, because it was FUD plus SLB, self-limiting beliefs. What was the F? F-U-D, because my F-U went right away. Exactly. So that is fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Do not give in to fear, uncertainty, and doubt. It's out there. I'm not saying it's not there. I'm saying it's there, and let's not give in to it. Fantastic. So anybody has a question, please unmute yourself and let's go. I think Mike Phillips has a question because he wants to think big and act bigger. I didn't have a question. I, I just know, enjoyed but I just that. Like that was the, on you anyway. I, I appreciate that you put me on the spot. I liked the circles at the beginning. I used Joe Ingram for the answer for all of them. All three. So yeah, it was all three. What are you passionate about, Joe Ingram? Who's he passionate about, Joe Ingram? Right. Who are yeah. So no, I, I don't all have a of question, my but I think it was fantastic. Johnny Richardson. <laughs> just keep passing the ball. Right. As it went through. So. There you go. David, so a quick question for you, sir. And great presentation. I love it. Thank you. You're very welcome. Absolutely. I've heard a lot of great things about you uh, from Joe. So uh, I'm excited you're on the call today. Now, one, th one thing you had mentioned is solve bigger problems to receive bigger checks. So let me ask you a question about that. So I'm in real estate out here in Las Vegas and I constantly have my agents. They want to get into a luxury market. Me personally, I worked on a volume basis all, always because I don't want to limit myself. So in our industry, yeah, going bigger, bigger commissions, but then you're working with less clients. So how do you feel about that when uh, you say solve bigger problems for bigger checks on a real estate end? What would your feedback be? 
Well, I also think, so, you know, here's what I never do. When, when, when someone says, hey, I'm really, really successful doing this over here, should I change it? My answer is probably not. Yep. So, but it, it's a preference thing. You know, if you're just knocking it out of the park with the volume play, keep going with the volume play. But I think you put your finger on it in real estate and selling a lot of things, right? Let's say we have a $500,000 year. You can have 500 sales that bring in $1,000. You can have two sales that bring in $250,000. Both of those salespeople have had a $500,000 year, but they're doing it in a very, very different way. So find the way that you love, find the way that works for you, given some of the other parameters and some of the other items we talked about. If you love it and it's working great and you know, you want to kind of play the field. I'll go low end, medium end, and super high end. You know, if it's working, awesome. Uh, the mantra to answer your question is yes, of course, if we're, you know, if we're doing bigger deals, it's going to be fewer of them. But if you're great at turning around big deals, I have a client here in the Philly area who's a business broker, uh, which is the, probably the worst business in the world, by the way. Um, he, <laughs> he'll have $0 months because he works on these deals for like six months, year, year and a half. And he goes, when one deal closes, I go buy a Maserati. I, I could go buy a Maserati. I mean, he doesn't because he has to eat, but it's like he's whale hunting. That business is all about whale hunting. It is really huge deals for 500,000 million, $2 million sometimes and make a sale every six months, make a sale every four months. He loves that. He says, you know, if I do five, if I do five transactions a year, I'm already at, at, at a million bucks in his fees. So his, he's in the five transaction a year business. You know, you're selling 20 cars a month. Someone else is selling 20 cars a month. They're in the 20 transactions a month, 240 transactions a year. So it's about finding your sweet spot and what you love to do and then just doubling down on that. For, I didn't realize you're from Philadelphia. I used to run a valet staff on Delver Ave many years ago, back when- Oh, how about that? Yeah, when Rock Lobster was around and all that. We're yeah. talking about like the late 90s. Right. And another quick question, you didn't bring it up. I've been watching it on your back shelf there. Is your book, Do It Speaking? Can Two you... books. So Do It Marketing is the one that you're getting a free copy of when you do the Kiwi Live. And then I do have my new book that just came out in January. It's called Do It Speaking. Okay. And what you're just giving more uh, information and content as far as helping people speak being like uh, just speaking a as a lead generator, speaking as a thought leadership tool, speaking as a one-to-many sales tool. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. And perfect. a lot of that applies to speaking online, kind of like what we're doing here and what you, what you do, what Joe does, what I do. Uh, this is a form of speaking. Welcome to COVID-19. Um, <laughs> you know, and this also includes speaking on podcasts and videos and live streams and your YouTube channel and all kinds of fun stuff. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time today. You bet. Fantastic. So Johnny, if you go to the more expensive homes, sure. then you do less Instagram posts. So you don't <laughs> want to do that, right? You want more to stay out there in front of everybody. So exactly. in the chat box for everybody who's here, um, I put in the do it speaking. It is unbelievably priced at $11 and 21 cents on Amazon for a hardcover. Good what boy. is that about? I mean, the paperback costs more than that. Guys, come on. That, that's not. Hey, do you have that on Audible by chance? Yeah. It is on Audible. It's $16.77 or one credit if you're on the program. I will use one credit. Sir. I would use one credit as well. But I have to keep my credits for my wife, my bride, who's actually here. I saw Natalie smile as soon as she walked on the screen. And I was like, oh, yes, there she goes. But I'm muted. Can you tell? Um, so, all right. Any other questions, Colonel Dylan, you got a question? Come on, man. You're killing it where you're at now. So what do you yeah, got for, I, for David? I guess I have a question because yeah. you know, what I do have a problem with is I got five different jobs really. So all week long, I'm busy doing stuff, getting on lives and doing different jobs and three of them kind of coincide together, but two of them totally off the wall. But when I do something for them, you know, I make a grand in 30 minutes, two grand, you know, with a week's worth of work, but 
Yeah, just trying to figure out. There's sometimes I like I don't even need it, but then I look at the money and I'm like, well, shit, I can't say no to that. So I, when you said it, that, he's you know, not saying, but it's dancing. Focus. It's dancing is yeah. what he does for three no, grand but, a minute. Yeah. So. But when you, when you said focus on get clarity on what you want to do, I think that's my problem because I still see the money. I go, it's kind of like squirrel money. So it's hard. It's hard to like focus area. Yeah, well, that's that's part of the that's the decision muscle, right? That we talk about clarity, focus, and decisions. Part of the decision is what business am I in? What business should I be in? What business do my prospects and customers need me to be in? And then where am I not going to go? Where am I not? That's like about the uh, you know we talked about who's not your customer or what's not your project, what's not your product, what's not your service. Um, a lot of, especially salespeople, uh, very creative, very talented, lots of things that we can do. And sometimes that word can, lots of things we can sell. That word can will kill you because can means I'm able to do that. De a decision is, should I do that? And one of my favorite quotes, I wish I knew who it was from. I've looked it up online a half a dozen times. I can't find the source. If you guys can find it, let me know. Once you make a decision, your choices are easy. And I love that quote. Once you've made a decision, the choices that you make on a day-to-day -day basis are easy. So, you know, if I decide I'm going to go over here and then I, have, I get an email or I get an offer or I talk to Joe or I talk to our buddy Ken Walls or something else comes across my radar, I said, okay, I've made this decision. That choice, that's an easy yes or no. It either fits my decision or it doesn't. It either fits that worldview or it doesn't. It either fits that sales model or that business model or it doesn't. So once you've made these decisions, really made them, not just thought about them, but committed to that decision, the day-to-day -day choices are easy. You know what emails to delete. You know what opportunities to say no thank you to. You know whose podcast you don't want to go on. You don't need to go on. You know what shiny objects you can ignore in your inbox. Um, that is a hugely, that's been a hugely powerful, liberating quote in my world, which is once you make a decision, your choices are easy. All right. It was my quote. Yes, I said, thank you. I said that. I knew I could. You can't prove it. it. You can't I prove it. I'm going to take it. Yeah, I'm going to go do a good. post right now so you find it. Totally. Thank SEO, you. Match it up. Yeah, just just it meme in. it up. Make a meme, and I'll go. Well, clearly it's there, Joe. It was Joe. So there you go. I'm totally there. So, all right, fantastic. Anybody have any other questions? Because I have one, but I don't want to jump in on anybody else's. No. Okay. What's the criteria? Notice I didn't give them time to actually answer, but. Um, what is the criteria when you're looking? Because again, we keep saying decision, make a decision, make a decision, make a decision. My question to you is what is the parameters for making that decision? What is it that, like, is there a checklist? Here's the five things you need to do to make sure you make the right decision for you. Are we doing gut feel or is there a more methodical way? Because like Mike Phillips is really going to want the checklist to go through where Dr. Bill is just going, hey, not, this is what yeah, I felt. Yeah, not when it comes to something like this. I'm with yeah. Dr. Bill, man. <laughs> I think it's partly, it's, you know, uh, my recommendation with any kind of big decision that you're making is to have a one person retreat with yourself. Uh, literally take an hour, two hours and just shut off the world, close the laptop, uh, go off somewhere with one of these, pad of paper, bunch of colored pens, mind map, diagram, brainstorm, flip chart, post-it note. I keep these on my desk all the time, little three inch square post-it notes. I just start doodling, processing. I think on paper. So a big decision about, hey, should I go left? Should I go right? Should I go high-end homes? Should I go volume? Should I do this? Should I do that? You know, people do all kinds of things. They make pro-con lists. They make, you know, all kinds of you know, if I do this, here's what I can expect. If I do that, here's what I can expect. Uh, the reason I say a one or two hours, you don't want to do it 10 minutes sitting at your desk drinking a Pepsi. You really want to have a separate, ideally get up out of your desk, 
go somewhere else in the house, go outside, go to your backyard, smoke a cigar, have a bourbon, do whatever you want to do, and really process that decision emotionally, intellectually, uh, spiritually, financially. Um, I, have a, I have a series of these, these um, legal pad sheets from one of the, the really critical one-person retreats I did. I went to Starbucks for two hours in 2010, and it changed my business. I have a file with these 10-year-old uh, legal pad sheets, and I said, I changed my business on this day because I decided I was sick and tired of being a broke-ass loser, and everything needed to change what I was doing, who I was doing it for, what I was offering, my business model, my strategy, my delivery modes, everything. So my question then is, um, if, you, if you find yourself not going forward with whatever your business or virtual training program that you actually paid for and built, but haven't put into play, <laughs> Brian totally. Galke, right? So, um, how, what would be the next step to push you in the, the right direction? What, what would be the do it answer? <laughs> Sometimes the right direction is to you, because there's so many pressures about what we should do and fear of missing out FOMO, right? So for the last five years, I have, I work with entrepreneurs, marketing people, salespeople, consultants. That's my people. I have not walked into a corporation as a client, having them as my client, uh, since 2012, 2013. What's been rattling around in my head, got to have a corporate offer, got to sell to corporate, got to have a big company offer, got to, and I find, and I build, I build web pages and there's still, if you go to the do it marketing, it says four corporations, never sold a goddamn thing to a corporation since the year 2012, but I've always felt this pressure, like I really should do this. So two, three years ago, I said, you know what? Screw it. I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna do it. And that decision, right? Once you make a decision, your choices are easy. I was like, if I never walk into a corporate client ever again, awesome. That would be fantastic because you guys are my people. You guys are my people. I'm not going to walk into IBM. I'm not going to walk into Amazon. I'm not going to walk into Google headquarters and go, guys, hey, I'm your marketing coach. It's like, what? What are you talking about? We have a 500-person marketing department, dude. We don't need you. But I felt compelled, and I was building stuff for them, and I was marketing, and I was on LinkedIn, and I had all kinds of crazy, you know, and, and I'm already a seven-figure business, by the way. So it's not like I was broken trying to do this. I'm successful and I'm trying to do this. And I realized, no, stupid, bad, stop. So there's things in your life and your business and your sales career that are stupid, bad, stop. You don't need to go there. You don't need to do that. That is not for you. So one of the new filters that I teach my clients now is not me, not now. Not me, not now is a huge decision-making tool. I decided after much craziness, corporate, that's not me. That's not me. It's never been me. It never will be me. It's not me now. So forget it. Other things, so you might say, well, you know, someday I want to write a book. I want to write a book like this David Newman clown. God, if this clown can write a book, I can definitely write a book. If that's on your wish list, it's not a not me but it might be a not now. Is, is this the right moment, right? The middle of this pandemic, 2020, is this the moment that I should write that book? Maybe the answer is yes. Maybe the answer is yes. Maybe the answer is, I really want to do that. Not now. So it's a focusing tool. You put things on your not me list. Look at that list. Go, oh yeah, I've always wanted to do that, but that's not me. That doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel right. That doesn't feel like the path to success. And not now is simply a time shift. You know, not now, let me focus on other things. That's on my not now list. I will get to it, but not now. And it frees you up. I can't tell you the feeling that when you say, okay, that's not me. It's never going to be me. I'm going to let that, let, that's for somebody else. That is for somebody else. That's not me. And then not now is, okay, 
I don't need to beat myself up every single day for not getting up and writing two pages of my book. Not now, maybe the Christmas break, maybe 2021, maybe next summer I'll take a week off, write the damn book. Not now and not me are two huge decision-making tools. Ken Walls just joined us on Facebook. Oh all, God, all he no, said was, no, 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 Damn no. it, I missed a lot. But I mean, it wasn't really there. It was, you know, it was Ken, you didn't really this, miss it. This was a huge waste of time, Ken. This was you, whatever you were doing, it was time better spent. We were just screwing around in here. Right, we, we, we just spent the whole day just going, not me, not now. Not me, That's not all it now, was, man. right? So Terrible. it's not a me too thing, it's a not me thing. Okay, that's what we're going for. That's my hashtag, not me, right. not me. So, I didn't do it, I didn't gonna, do it. I'm gonna jump over to Facebook and because people are commenting over there. So I'm sure well, they are. Weldon, Weldon said, I've been looking at volume at the volume thing because he was referring to Johnny, right? He said, as I transition from cars into real estate. So he said, I have other income flows so I might try the higher commissions with less volume. And so I don't, to me, I only understand volume, right? So to me, volume solves almost every problem, okay? Because then if I, if I have an X amount of volume going through, a slight tweak upward of price means it's multiplied times a larger number and it moves forward. So again, but again, volume always keeps you busy and always keeps you going. And that's what I look at. And that's my answer is if I can keep going and keep going, then that's what, that's what I want to do. Um, Jimmy Monroe, it says James, but I know he's Jimmy, right? His answer was, um, or you can just get higher commission on the same volume. So that's possible, but you know, that's him. And of course my bride is text over gross, go for gross, go for gross. Okay. So she's in there. So yeah, Natalie agrees with you, but, um, Norbert said a hundred percent, uh, everything you've said has made sense. So he's excited, but, um, which is great because he's in another country. So you're touching lives all over the place, David. Nice. That's fantastic. Uh, Edwin Marino wrote in here. That's good. Once you make a decision, your choices are easy. So simple, so effective. Yeah. So that's, uh, again, that right there alone is going to change everybody. And I'm glad I made up that quote. Yes. For you to see somewhere online. Yeah. True. So. Uh, I do have to say, David, it has been absolutely phenomenal. And everything you threw at us was amazing. And I appreciate you, your time and your willingness to share for everybody that's there. This will be on YouTube. This will stay on Facebook. So you can drop back in. But David, what's the site we have to go put our number in and, and go to? It is Kiwi Live, KiwiLive.com. I'll actually pop it here in the chat so these folks can see it. And then we can also put it wherever you want to put it, Joe. It's KiwiLive.com. And the code that they're going to ask you for is simply my code, do it, D O I T. And that's going to get you the PowerPoint, the PDFs, the free training, all kinds of other cool goodies. And um, it's, it's going to be great. The free copy of the Do It Marketing book. Everyone's going to get courtesy of Joe. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. This was great. Fantastic. I appreciate you guys. I so appreciate everybody taking the time out. Right. And David, I appreciate everything you've invested into all of us. Everybody else, please don't be a fool. Okay. And a fool would get off of this live and never go to kiwilive.com and put in the code, do it. Johnny's already done it. I'm watching him. He's typing and putting it through there. So go in there, right? The, the thing we have to do is take the knowledge we have and put it into action. Okay. And as salespeople, we're really, really motivated by ourselves, right? And our moods at the time. So take advantage of the fact that you have your, <laughs> you're excited about it now to go do it. Because if you wait, right? Law of diminishing intent, Lodi is going to come into effect and you're going to go, yeah, that was something. But again, this can be used for Casey and everything you do, Mike Phillips, what you're doing, Dr. Bill sometimes, right? If Dr. Bill turned his laptop, you'd see the whole mind map up on his wall because I've been there, right? He's got his whole business mapped out on the, on the wall. So his, he has a whiteboard as a wall. Nice. So it's, it's all there and he can make. So, um, but I appreciate you all. And as always, we'll end this call with one phrase. Go sell something. Thanks.